On today's show, why the NADA expects used car prices to soften next year, how open source software is the answer to cybersecurity, and Land Rover makes trailers disappear. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for September 1st of 2015. As we reported back in July, part of the penalty levied against FCA for delaying action on recalls was to offer incentives in order to get more recalled vehicles fixed. The company just announced that owners of affected Chrysler, Dodge, and Ram vehicles can opt for a $1,000 credit towards the purchase of a new FCA vehicle or get a $100 prepaid credit card after a recall repair is completed. As we reported before as well, only 75% of owners of recalled vehicles get it fixed. So are these incentives enough to get more owners to take their vehicle in? I'm not so sure. What do you think? Let us know in the comments section below. And speaking of FCA, the automaker has reworked its 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 engine for 2016. The biggest enhancements come in the form of a two-step variable valve list system, cooled EGR, and key weight reduction in certain areas. Depending on the application, fuel economy is improved by as much as 6% and torque is increased by nearly 15% at engine speeds below 3000 RPM. The reworked engine will make its debut in the 2016 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Last week we told you about how used car prices keep climbing. Many analysts expected prices to drop now that new car sales have recovered, but that's not the case. According to Edmonds, the average used car costs nearly $19,000. But Stephen Zackley, the chief economist at the National Automobile Dealers Association, told us on AutoLine this week he expects used car prices to soften next year. That's because there will be a lot of vehicles coming off lease, which will boost supply. But Zackley says used prices will depend on what type of vehicle you buy. He says, and I quote, I think you'll see in the used car market the same thing you see in the new car market where small mid-sized cars are going to struggle and the pickup cross-utility residual values and their sales prices are going to remain strong. So in other words, don't expect any deals if you're waiting to buy a used truck or CUV. We'll be back with more right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, Breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. And by Pure Michigan, leading the automotive world in intelligent connected vehicles. We run on brain power. Cybersecurity is one of those hot button topics in the automotive industry at the moment, highlighted by vehicles from FCA and Tesla getting hacked within the last several weeks. Their fix was to offer customers a software update at which time we speculated that updates will become as routine as an oil change. And according to Joel Hoffman of Renesis, a silicon manufacturer based in Japan that owns a 30% market share of all automotive electronics in the world, says we're more specifically going to see over-the-air updates, which will be needed to keep up with hackers. But that creates a little bit of a double-edged sword. You'll take care of the current issue, but also give open access to the vehicle. While both a hardware and software solution will be needed, the real challenge is with software. Hoffman says, we need to get open source software into cars. That might seem less safe, but if you can get a group to collaborate on the development of software, you move faster and can work the bugs out quicker. And about six years ago, a consortium of automakers, tier one suppliers, and software manufacturers formed the Genevia Alliance advocating for open source solutions in vehicles. There are now about a dozen manufacturers with a Linux-based operating system in their cars on the road today. You know, as it gears up for the Frankfurt Auto Show, Infiniti is giving us our first peek inside its all-new compact CUV, the Q30. As you can see, the driver gets a small display screen nestled between the tack and speedo, while the infotainment and HVAC controls have a layered appearance. It looks to have a good amount of buttons and knobs to operate functions, but also has a rotary control knob as well. The Q30 makes its world premiere on September 15th. And coming up next, how Land Rover can make a trailer disappear.
There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. Last year, Land Rover demonstrated augmented reality technology that makes it look as if the hood of the car is transparent and lets you see exactly where the front wheels are in relation to the road. A great feature for tight off-road situations. And now the company is showing off a similar feature called Transparent Trailer, which makes a trailer seem invisible when it's being towed. The system combines the video feed from the vehicle's surround camera system with video from a camera placed on the rear of the trailer. The feeds are then combined to create a live video image that makes the trailer appear see-through. When the trailer is attached to the car, the live video feed automatically appears in the rear view mirror. In addition to that, the company also developed what it calls Cargo Sense. The system combines a remote video camera inside the trailer and a mat of pressure sensors on the floor that are linked wirelessly to the towing vehicle. The technology detects if your cargo isn't as secure as you thought it was and then sends a warning to the dashboard to alert the driver. Live video footage from inside the trailer could then be shown on the infotainment screen. And when the owner is away from the trailer, CargoSense can send an alert to a smartphone if it's being tampered with. Hey, don't forget to join us for AutoLine After Hours this week. Our special guest is Peter Swetman, the director of the University of Michigan's Mobility Transportation Center. He's in charge of M-City, a 32-acre facility that simulates both urban and suburban environments to test autonomous vehicles. So if you want to learn more about self-driving cars, make sure you join us this Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on Autoline.tv. That wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching and have a great day.